The main focus for Elm at present is to make HTML applications. With that in mind, we'll make our first HTML application. Let's get started. We'll start off by making a new directory and using Elm package to install Elm HTML. Now we're just going to start off with the most basic starting Elm project, a counter. Let's make our main.elm file. We'll start off just producing some HTML. To do this, we'll import the HTML module to start. This says we'd like to import everything from the HTML module, which is provided by the HTML package we installed. Let's make a main function that returns some HTML. And I actually have Elm format installed, so it auto formatted my code and added this bit up top. So this is using the div function from the HTML package. All of these functions take two list arguments. The first is a list of attributes, and the second is a list of child elements. In this case, we have a div with no arguments with a single text node as child. We can run this using the Elm reactor for fast development. In the project directory, just run Elm reactor. Now we can visit localhost port 8000, and we get the reactor here. We'll click on main.elm to run it. The reactor is a really fast way to develop an Elm. Okay, so that worked. Now let's come back here, and we'll make the content an int, and we'll run toString on it. So instead of this string here, we need to pass a string in. So we'll call toString, which just converts its uh, argument to a string, and we'll pass that string to the text function. Okay, so we can check that out. All right, so this is a very basic use of Elm HTML. Let's add a couple of buttons for incrementing and decrementing a counter. So I'll make a div, and then I'll make children. The first child will be a button, no arguments, and a minus sign inside of it. Then we'll put this div that we already created. And finally, we'll put another button with a plus sign. Next, we'll move on to building out the app's functionality. We'll start out with our model, which defines the state for our application. Make a type alias. And this is going to say that the type of our model is an integer. So we'll call it model, but the compiler knows it's just an integer. And this is because our model is going to be a single integer. We're just going to increment and decrement it. You can do two things with this model, increment it and decrement it. These are our two messages. We'll define a union type for them. Union type sounds like something fancy, but it's literally just a few types joined together into a single type. In this case, we're saying that a message type is either increment or decrement. Next, we'll define an update function. This is the first time we're seeing functions, so I'll try to be very explicit. First, we'll define the type signature for the function. Our update function takes a message and a model and returns a model. Next, we'll define the function. Here we'll define a function that takes those two arguments, update takes a message and a model, oops, and we'll define a case statement that does a branch on the message argument. So we'll do case message of increment return model plus one. If it's decrement, return model minus one. So here we're saying that if our message is an increment, we add one to the model, and if it's a decrement, we subtract one from the model. The last expression in a function is the return value. So here we've satisfied our type signature in that we're just returning an int, which is all our model type is. If you're used to seeing parentheses and curly braces everywhere when defining functions, this might look a little bit weird. The syntax for Elm is extremely sparse, and after a little usage, it starts to feel rather natural. I do remember the syntax throwing me for a loop initially, though. Okay, so this defines all of the functional operation of our application. We also want to be able to see the model, though, so let's do that. We'll define a function called view. Elm has a very standard way to build applications, so our view function takes a model and it returns a type of HTML that produces message, which will look like this. And you can think of this, this is a parameterized type, so HTML of type message, where message is our message union type. Now we'll copy in the existing main function definition here. And we'll replace the hard-coded one with our model. 
We'll define a new main in a second. I'm just going to comment it out for a sec for now. So now for our main function, we're going to use something that Elm provides called beginner program. It is an easy way of wiring a model, update, and view together to make an application. It came in the HTML package. We'll import it into our application. And it comes in HTML.app, and we'll just call that app. And finally, we'll define our main function using the beginner program function, which is exposed by HTML.app. And it takes a record with three fields. So it has the model, which is our initial model. It has view, which is our view function, and has update, which is our update function. Okay, so let's have a look at it. And so it, it looks basically like you would expect. We have our buttons, we have our two string. The next thing we want to do is start wiring messages from the buttons. This is where the message comes in. In our view function, we want to produce the increment and decrement messages when the appropriate buttons are pressed. We do this with the attributes for the buttons. So on click here, we'll produce decrement. And on click here, we'll produce increment. If we try to run it now though, we should get an error. Yeah, so basically it doesn't have a clue what onClick is, and that's because it comes from HTML's HTML.events module. So we'll import this function, so we'll import HTML.events, and we'll expose the onClick function. And so now, if we refresh the page, we have a function encounter with buttons that modify it. So that's our first HTML app with Elm. It's pretty fantastically simple. See you soon.